Welcome to this presentation of PSRC housing data for the Central Puget Sound region. I'm Paul Ingram, the Director of Growth Management at the Puget Sound Regional Council. Joining me is Laura Benjamin, our Principal Planner that leads PSRC's housing work. This presentation is intended for City Councils, Planning Commissions, and agencies working on local housing strategies. We hope that this helps your housing work. I wanna start with some context about the region. The central Puget Sound region includes more than 4 million people among 82 cities and nine tribes. It also includes other agencies in King, Kitsap, Pierce and Snohomish counties. PSRC is the place the region comes together to make decisions about transportation, housing, growth management, environmental restoration and economic development. Vision 2050 is the region's long range plan. It's much like the regional version of your local comprehensive plan with regional policies on land use, housing, transportation, and other topics. Vision 2050 was adopted in 2020 to provide the growth forecast and policy foundation to support regional actions and local plan updates. When adopting Vision 2050, the region's leaders stated that housing access and affordability were priority issues for the agency to address. Since 2020, PSRC has completed several implementation steps, including adopting a regional housing strategy and a regional housing needs analysis. PSRC has also issued several data and guidance resources that may help with your conference plan update. Adopted regional housing strategy is a playbook of actions for the state, the region, and local jurisdictions, recognizing that we all have a role to play to address housing needs in our communities. The heart of the strategy is that the region needs more housing overall. People should have the ability to continue to live in their communities and that more funding is necessary to fully meet the housing needs. To find out more about what people think about housing and housing solutions, PSRC collaborated with the State Department of Commerce to conduct a public opinion survey in the fall of 2022. We surveyed people in the Puget Sound region and in communities across the state. Not surprisingly, people responded that housing costs and homelessness are their top two issues, and that housing costs too much and rents are too high. I will share some more of the survey responses in a minute. First, I want to turn to Laura Benjamin to share some of the housing data we've been tracking in our monitoring report. Laura? Thanks, Paul. Our region is growing, and we need more housing to meet the demands of this growth. Over the next 30 years, between 2020 and 2050, the region needs about 800,000 additional housing units to accommodate future population growth. This chart shows the approximate housing growth needed in each of the region's four counties. Housing is expensive. Data from Zillow underscores what we heard from residents. From 2014 to 2022, the average rent increased 60%, and home values increased 135%. This chart shows rents in orange and home values in purple. There has been some stabilization in housing costs in the past year, but rent and home prices are still too high for many residents, especially moderate and lower income households and households trying to buy a home for the first time. We've also heard from residents about the high cost of housing. PSRC held a series of focus groups in 2021, and the costs of housing and the trade-offs made to pay for housing were a key point of discussion. Data analysis also helps us to see how rising housing costs affect people when we look at the percentage of household income spent on housing. A household is considered cost burden if they spend more than 30% of their income on housing costs, and severely cost burdened if they spend more than 50% of their income on housing costs. Housing costs include rent and mortgage payments, utilities, and HOA fees. The majority of lower and moderate income renters, households earning less than $75,000 per year, spend more than 30% of their income on housing. These households are considered cost burdened and with more income going towards housing, often have less for food, medical care, and savings for an emergency. 
Data analysis shows us that on average, housing can cost more or less depending on the type of housing. Middle density housing, such as a duplex or townhome, and often referred to as missing middle housing, are some of the least costly home ownership options in the region. These are shown in the teal and the green lines on this chart. In some cases, a middle density housing option such as a low rise condominium or a townhome can cost two thirds to half the cost of a detached single family home. However, middle density housing options are often limited in many communities and account for less than 10% of the region's housing stock. Black, indigenous, and people of color renters have less access to affordable rental housing than white renters underscoring disparities in income, wealth, and access to housing. This map shows access to affordable rentals for white renter households, with affordable areas shown in teal and less affordable areas shown in mint green. This map in comparison shows access to affordable rentals for black renter households, with affordable areas again shown in teal and less affordable areas shown in mint green. Many black renters have extremely few rental housing choices in this region. Many of the few affordable rental areas are farther from jobs and transit, which nearly ensures auto dependency, long commutes and limited access to opportunity and community. The data analysis shown in these maps is underscored by what we heard from residents. Many residents shared how long commutes and being farther from jobs, services, family, and other community impacts their lives. We also see that there continue to be disparities in home ownership between white and black households. Even after controlling for household income, home ownership rates for people of color fall far short for rates of white households, especially for lower and moderate income households. The home ownership rate for households with a white household is about twice the rate for those with a black household. And now I'll pass it back to Paul to share more about the findings of the recent public opinion survey. Thanks, Laura. I want to share a few more of the findings from the public opinion poll. The survey responses tell us that people want more housing options for people to be able to live in their communities. People prefer housing that is in walkable neighborhoods and that their communities need more diverse and affordable housing choices. Based on the research, Laura noted that middle housing could be less expensive than traditional single family housing. We wanted to hear people's opinions about it. The survey tells us that people agree that communities need more housing options like duplexes, cottage housing, and townhomes. 58% agree that triplexes should be allowed in single family zones when they meet the standards of the zone, such as heights and setbacks. This seems to be consistent with other responses where people indicate that they care more about how housing fits in their communities and less about whether it's single family or form of middle housing. In fact, 80% of respondents said that more housing will make their communities better if done well. I think that that, that is really important. While we often hear concerns about the impacts of new developments, it shows that people also see the benefits more housing can bring to their communities. People fully support government agencies working together to address housing needs. And 64% say that government needs to do more where the market isn't able to provide housing. And we know from our data research that it is very difficult for the market to provide housing for lower income and sometimes even middle income households. I hope that this short presentation on housing data has been informative and helpful. We just touched on a few of the data points that we have been tracking. The full survey results, the full 2022 housing monitoring report, and additional planning resources are available on PSRC's website. Thank you for your time, and we hope that this presentation has been helpful. Please reach out to Laura or me if you have any questions about this or need any assistance on housing. Thank you.